Welcome to Lawyer's Coach. My name is Oliver Hansard, and each episode of this podcast will feature myself or Claire Rayson, both of us coaches and former lawyers, trying to find out what makes lawyers tick. We'll be hearing from various guests and experts, and then at the end of each episode, we will both be reflecting on what they said. Nir Golan is a lawyer with a passion for innovation. Whilst Nir has worked with tech companies and startups, he doesn't believe that innovation should just focus on technology. In this interview with Claire, he explains why the human element is key, but starts by revealing why he became a lawyer. I think what I've, what I've, what I've always liked about uh, lawyers um, is the, cre- the creativity that comes mm-hmm. with it. So it's, it's not, it's not a black, it's not, it's not a black or white world. Everything is a, a lot in the gray areas and there, there it leaves a lot of room for, you know, for, uh, for creativity and for flexibility. Um, and I, I love that. I love the fact that, you know, you can argue things in so many different ways and it just, it gives you more room for to express your own creativity and your own thinking. And uh, I've always loved that about law. Um, uh, my father always wanted me to be an engineer. He's a, he's an engineer. And I, and so where, for, where in, in his world, everything is black or white, there is one answer. And uh, I, I always like the fact that there were many different answers to questions. So that was, that, that was really the issue. With, that's what I have always liked about law. Um, and creativity and law are two things that don't often go together. So do you think lawyers generally are good at being creative or? I think so, actually. So um, I, I'm, I'm actually, I come from this, <laughs> the, the side of, of, of people who actually think that um, being, uh, be, being a lawyer is a lot about, be, uh, about a lot about being creative with the law and around the law. I think creativity is inherent when it comes to law. Um, you, can't be, you can't be a good lawyer if, you, if you're not creative. Um, and if you really want to create solutions for your, for, your, for, your, for your customers, it's mostly about creativity all day, every day especially if you're, um, if you're a co- corporate or commercial lawyer um, like myself. And you've mentioned customers there, and I know that you're quite passionate about believing that lawyers should talk about customers and not clients. So do you want to tell me a bit about that? Well, I, so the, the thing that that's, that's always bothered me a bit about calling, calling them clients is that it, feel, it feels like law and legal is separate from the rest of the world where it's just customers. Um, and I, I, I think one of, and I'm sure that it's something that we'll touch upon a bit later, but um, I think that one, one, one of the problems with, with the legal industry um, is that it's, 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 it's really stayed so, so much behind because of this kind of exceptionalism thinking, um, thinking that, you know, we're special and, every, you know, all the, all the different processes and methodologies uh, and you know all these all the evolution that a lot of the a lot of the other industries have gone through don't apply to law, and clients is just is just it's just an example of that um, because when when you talk about customers, there are a lot of things that come with that. So you can you can talk about customer experience and innovation, and so uh, what I like about that is what I like about calling them customers is that we actually blend in. We uh, we we become innovative by blending in with the rest of the world, and calling them just customers. Um, and you know, there's so much to take from, from the other industries. And you talked about experience there. And I think that's something that, you know, the legal industry is starting to wake up to that they need to, you know, you know, there's lots of talk about kind of providing an, an experience to, to customers, to clients is going to be the next thing for law firms. Do you, do you agree with that? Yes, definitely. So I, I actually think, um, I think that's, that's one of the main ways to actually differentiate. Um, so if, if you look at the legal market, I mean, it's, 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 a heavily, it's a heavily competitive and saturated market. There are so many different firms all basically saying the same thing. Um, if, you go, if you go to you know, one magic circle, uh, from one magic circle to another magic circle to another international law firm, you'd ask them what, the, what, the, what, you know, what makes them different. It'll be difficult for them to answer. They'll say, yes, you know, we, uh, we, uh, we are excellent in this and that field. And we have offices in 20 cities or 25 cities or 30 cities. And I think that, I think that, um, I think that the legal knowledge and legal excellence, it's, um, it's really, uh, um, it's really a given today. I mean, so that's, that's just, that's just um, the first level of the pyramid. I think that the how 
the how we deliver legal services is gonna is what the future is about, and that's where the differentiation is. And and that from when I think about how, and I, I think about customer experience, and everything and, how, and everything that comes with it. And how do you think firms should start to to change and and you know provide an experience that GCs want and you know are, are delighted with? That's a that's a how how long do you have? <laughs> Um, I think I think the the main issue is really to um, actually spend more time understanding, observing uh, the customer and their needs and their challenges, um, you know. And basically, and and what, once you once you actually spend more time understanding what their needs are and what their problems are. Um, you can then find ways, creative and new, uh, and new ways to actually meet those needs. Um, and I think that one, that's, that's, that's one thing. And the second thing I think that's really key is to have the, be the best way to, do, to actually create a, a great customer experience of building the how is to build these solutions um, with a multidisciplinary team. So mm -hmm. if, if the typical law firm is just, you know, as, as a customer, usually you don't go beyond the partner, right? Or the partner or the associate that's helping the partner. Um, but since at the end of the day, it's about creating a product, a service with experience. And uh, the, uh, this, this requires other disciplines, other skills, and it requires a multidisciplinary team to, to create that experience. And I think, that, I think that the firms that will be ahead of the curve are going to be the ones that, um, that understand that it doesn't that being you know just working with a partner isn't enough. The customer needs a whole experience. He needs he needs a multidisciplinary team that can help them create um, creative and innovative solutions for complex problems. And I know we've spoken about it before, and it's something that I'm passionate about, and and that's kind of diverse thinking, and that's something that kind of comes from having that multidisciplinary team. So about having people you know from different backgrounds people from different parts of the business with different thought processes and i think it's something that clients are starting clients customers are starting to to require law firms to deliver do you think the law firms are hearing that message so first of all i'm not sure that actually most most customers are actually asking for that um, I, again and this is and i've had i've had a lot of discussions with buyers different buyers uh, and, um, you know, and different customers. And one of the issues is that a lot of the, a lot of the, and again, it, it, de it depends. So I, I look at, I'm looking at it from, from the customer perspective. So from the customer perspective, I think that, um, I think that there are very few, very few customers that actually think that way. Um, I think, uh, I think that, the new realities maybe may dictate this, especially now. If you look at if you look at COVID, is a great example. Um, mm -hmm. of, you know, having new challenges, new challenges, complex challenges that require a different kind of thinking and a different kind of delivery of legal services. People don't have time. People want things to be more quick, more 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 um, more uh, nimble, more uh, you know, more adapted to their specific business needs, which are very complex these days. Um, and to do that. You need you need a you need a you need a different kind of thinking. You need a, a diverse team. Um, so I, I spent I spent about half my career working in house, um, and a big part of that was working with multidisciplinary team all the time. So you, I'd I'd work with the product team and the delivery team, and uh, the R and D team and the user experience team, uh, and the finance team. So. This is this is how we approach problems. So in the legal, uh, so any most problems uh, the customers have, their business problems with legal dimensions. But they but they at the end of the day they are business they are business decisions, and you have to make sure that you have the right people in the room to create those um, those business driven uh, um, solutions. Because at the end, the customer what they want they want they want a solution for their problem. Mm -hmm. That's that's what legal is. That's what legal. At least again, I'm talking about the cor the corporate and commercial side. I'm not talking about litigation or anything like that. Okay, um, but on the corporate commercial side, they want they want solutions to their business problems. They want outcomes. This is this is this is what they want. They they just want to do this now. Make it happen. If 
find, find solution. Um, and I, I, I found that involving the customer in the process, working with the customer on creating these solutions. And the, when I say customer, I'm thinking about the various people who are uh, implicated or that are impacted by this issue. It just, it creates um, very, very interesting solutions. Um, and if you, don't, if you don't know that, how to do that in-house, you, you, you won't survive because they, it's not about you. So a big thing about working in-house, it's not about you. It's not about how smart a lawyer you are. It's, it's, about, it's, about, um, it's about how do you work with the team? How do you work with your customers? And how do you create solutions with your customers? It's not about you. It's about the business. You are there to drive the business and to protect the business. You touched on it earlier when you were talking about understanding and how it's really important for private practice lawyers to understand their client. And, you know, their client sits within, you know, the business, they have their own stakeholders. And it's something that I'm, you know, getting lawyers to listen is something I'm really passionate about. And earlier on in the series, I spoke to a managing partner of a firm who said that, you know, for him, one of the difficulties with lawyers is they like to provide a solution. Um, they like to fill that space and they like to jump in. And actually, that's something that can get in the way of listening and having that ability to know it's OK not to have the answer right now, um, but actually, you know, just to, to sit and listen. Does that ring true for you? In so many ways. <laughs> so in so many ways, I think that, um, and this, this is exactly the how, okay? This is, this is the how that I'm talking about. Um, so I, I spent the, the other half of my career working in private practice, okay? In, in biggest law firms, uh, in international corporate and M&A departments. And um, there, the way you're trained is, you know everything the customer doesn't know. And what you, what you think ma- is what matters most. Now, from the customer side, um, and especially if you're working, uh, if you're working with a team, um, it's the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite. It's not. It doesn't matter what I think. Um, it, it, you know what matters is what the business needs. And now I'm part of this team to create a solution, uh, a a this a multi cross functional multidisciplinary solution. Okay, and that's why. Listening is just so key. So, I mean, um, when I took my, uh, my, my, so my, my last role, the, 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 my, f- my first couple of months, all I did is just meet everyone I, and I just listened. That's, that's all I did for the first couple of months because I, there was just so much learning to do uh, from everyone to understand what their processes are, what their problems are, what their challenges are, um, what do they need, what do they need from legal? What is, it, what is it that they expect to get from me, um, from us? Um, and so it's uh, the first thing that, I mean, the, so I think that one, one big change that, that we need to see in the delivery of legal services in the future is that it's not about jumping to the solution, but first focusing on understanding the problem, which means listening to, to your customers um, and then empathizing with your customers so that you can really understand and ask, asking questions, asking open questions, and really understanding what the problem is. And, and it's okay to say that you don't know. Um, and, you know, because if you say you don't know, that means that you come with an open mind to actually listen and learn because there's so much that we can learn from our customers. Um, the best solutions are created with our customers, um, not for our customers. And this is, this is, this is exactly the, the difference between uh, between what a lot of what a lot of lawyers are trained to do and what customers need today in order to really create solutions that they can use and apply within their business and you've obviously moved from the place and and you know and I think it's not uncommon that you start in private practice you then move in house um, you then realize that it's not all about you um, you know I have many friends that have kind of crossed that divide and I think psychologically it's a kind of quite an an impact when you realize the business needs to move things forward but actually it's not all about me so how do you think you can create that shift in mindset when you're in private practice you know when you're in-house you kind of you're forced into that environment you have to take the time to sit back and listen how can private practice who you know worried about their billing worried about you know is this this chargeable or not you know how can how can that shift happen in private practice 
So I think, I think it's a mindset. It's, I mean, like you said, it's, it's a mindset issue and it's, it's a process. I think um, just a couple of things that come to mind. Uh, and, you know, I, this is something that is, it's, it's challenging. It's a, it's a culture issue. It's a culture issue. It's a mindset issue. It's a people issue. Um, I think that for one thing, I think um, if there was someone within the firm who, uh, who, uh, who's engaged in delivering the legal services and creating legal services, um, someone who can facilitate this, this discussion and this collaboration. This is why I, I, I mean, one of the things that I really, really create, I really believe in is, is creating that collaboration with customers so that you can uh, facilitate this, this discussion with them and, and having, having someone with this mindset, someone who's been on the customer side can really help someone who's been a buyer who can really help facilitate that between firms and together create a different or a better legal, better legal service, or legal experience. I think that can be very, very uh, beneficial. Um, see one of, one, one, one of the, one of the problems that I see with firms is that most of the people who are in charge of delivery of legal services or operations or innovation are people who have almost exclu- exclusively spent the, their career on the provider side. And I think that's a, that's a, I think that's a, that's a problem. I think that um, if we were speaking of diversity before, I think, I think now is a great time. If you really want to change that, now is a great time to bring some people from who, who were on the customer side, who have deep empathy for customers, who understand, you know, who have a big voice, a big customer voice and bring that in so that you can, you know, have that empathy and that customer voice beating, you know, in the, in the halls of the firm uh, and, cre- you know, in, in the decision-making role and make, being part of that team of, of uh, delivery of legal services. So I think that's one thing. The other thing is um, a, the collaboration with people from different skills in firms. Um, that can really help. It's a great way to learn, um, to, to work that way and to think that way. Um, because I think it's, it's a skill that you can learn by collaborating, by spending time with people from different, um, different uh, skills and different experiences. Um, there are great professionals in firms today who, uh, um, unfortunately, they're, they're, not, they're, not being, they're not being involved enough. Um, they're not at the table enough. And I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a big loss because, I mean, firms have this big, biggest source of innovation right there under their nose, and they're not using them. Uh, and I, I think it's a, it's, um, I think it's a, it's a miss. It's a miss for the firm. Um, and a great way to do that is to actually ask, uh, you know, for customers to actually ask to have a more diverse team. One of the reasons I love speaking to you is that, you know, actually saying, you know what, we want people that aren't just lawyers at the table because they bring that different thinking uh, that might just be the thinking that cracks the problem. Couldn't agree more. And here's the thing. What is so special about legal? So if, Let's say, let's say now I go, I go, I work. So I spent, I spent my entire career working for, um, with and for tech companies and startups. Okay. This is a, so this is, this, this has been my, uh, my, my industry. My industry has been the tech industry. You don't have non-tech people or, you know, as, as you have non-lawyers, you know, I, every time I hear that, I, again, I, I don't believe in that separation of them and us. Okay. Um, and you know, there Lawyers are involved in a lot of the other discussions. I mean, you don't have this division. You don't have this division where people are afraid to, you know, to uh, to speak with other people. So uh, again, I don't understand. Why, I, I never, I never understood this. I never understood why, why, I mean, why teams, diverse teams, can't work together because they're all working towards the same goal, the same purpose. Um, and I think it just, it's just about trying new things and understanding the the, the immense value this could bring uh, to customers. Um, and again, I'm talking about again. The you need some. There's a need somewhere, someone there that can actually facilitate this. Um, someone who can help bridge these uh, these two separate mindsets, and someone that you know the, a lot of the lawyers and partners can actually listen to. Do you think that everything that's happened with COVID nineteen is going to create some challenger firms? So I'd like to say yes. Okay. So when all this started. You know, for me, and I, I'm a big optimist. Um, I'm a big optimist, and I, I, I really, really hoped, and I still do hope, that out of all this, we will have firms with new cultures and, you know, new business models. Um, you know, 
um, co- more collaborative, more open-minded, uh, with you know the, the new solutions created based on new needs that arose uh, in COVID. So again, so, th- so first of all, definitely a, lot, a lot's happened. So it's been the the the, the speed at which firms embraced uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, call it collaborative technology. Okay, so you know uh, video conferencing and a lot of the other uh, communication and collaborative platforms out there, you know, the Teams and Zoom uh, and Google Meet, et cetera, has been really, really impressive, okay? So, I mean, so just, just give you an example. So uh, a year ago, the company that I, that I work with is a big believer in video. So every, all, all our calls within, our, within our, our organization, everything was done by video with Zoom, okay? So I've been, I've been working with, with video conferencing for 10 years, okay? Um, and we like to work with with the firms that we work also with that video because this is how we work you know our we we believe in you know humanizing these these calls so i spoke one of our firms i won't i won't say the name of the firm it's just say it's a it's a very big global firm and i we wanted to do we wanted to have a call via zoom okay because this is how it works this way i had multi-participants from our team everybody can see everyone and i thought it would be really really beneficial to, to the call and the response i got from this london team uh, was uh, we only use landlines, we don't do technology, okay? That was, the, that was the answer that I got, okay? That was a year ago, okay? So now if you fast forward to today, there's no, every single, every single call that I have these days, every single call, no matter what the, what the, what the subject is, everything is on, is, is, is on video. Everybody wants, everyone, so it's become the new norm. So in that sense, I think it's, um, I think it's really amazing. Okay, I think it's really amazing that people are, people are working from home. Apparently, and, and I'm hearing a lot a lot of data on this. People are much more productive. Okay, so productivity has gone up um, because you know uh, when working from home, I'm hearing about much greater collaboration between teams, uh, a much flatter culture uh, in terms of hierarchies, etc. Um, but to say, I think that this will change our industry completely the way I've been hearing a lot of, a lot of this narrative, I don't think so. Um, I think that the, the firms that were innovative before COVID are gonna be very, very innovative after COVID. Uh, and the firms that are more, are more conservative will embrace it as much as they need to and will go back to their old habits. Um, that's, what, that's, what, that's what I believe. Um, because it, 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 again, and I think it also depends on how long this will this will this will go on. So I I think this this is also a, a factor here. So um, I uh, in terms of offices, I've been hearing about London firms that are shedding shedding office space. Okay, uh, because they understand that uh, they can do that. They can people can work from home, etc. But the the problem with all this discussion is that the only thing we're talking about is where. We are talking about where we're working from. We are not talking about how we are working, and this is the this is the biggest this is the this is the big issue that I see in in the lack of change. Because at the end of the day, people are working exactly the same way, doing exactly what they did before, billing by the hour as they did before. They're just doing it from home. So and they're they're using a they're using Zoom or Teams to do it. So I think it'd be amazing if we see new products created or new services created around these new ways of working, this new collaborative way of working with, with customers, creating new workflows, creating new tools around teams. If, if, this, is, if this is the way they're going to do it, that could be amazing. And, but again, but uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure this, is, this, is, this is happening. I'm not sure this is where it's going. I see a lot of talk about working from home and Zoom, et cetera, but putting aside the, the, the where, I, uh, I have my doubts about the how. If, if we are really changing, uh, firms are really changing uh, in, uh, how they work, other, other, than, other than working from home. And in terms of the how, and it goes back to that understanding and, and empathy. So, you know, I've read a lot around how, okay, people are being more human, they're being more authentic, um, they are therefore more empathetic when they speak to people. 
but you know i've also spoken to gcs that have said you know where where are my lawyers you know my business hasn't been you know it's been one of those businesses that's been really hard hit with covid and you know with the exception of a few um webinars on how i can break all my contracts i've not had those empathetic conversations with my lawyers that you know actually i need right now what what have you been seeing Okay, so uh, again, I don't know if you've seen what I've what I've talked about what I've talked about in, in uh, recently, but so I've been seeing exactly the same thing. So I've been seeing so when COVID started, my inbox just was bombarded with endless memos around force majeure provisions, and and uh, and uh, webinars and endless invitation to webinars, etc. Uh, but that that's that that's it so this is this is this is where it ended um i've been so both i experienced and other gc friends that i've spoken with um have said the same they said we didn't receive one single call from our from our from our firms and the you know the, the, these are big spenders okay they are big buyers with bring a lot, a lot of money into firms not one single phone call not to say hi how are you how i mean how are you how are you coping with all this? Um, you know, the, the basic, basic human thing, right? Um, do you need something? Is there something that we can do for you? Um, how can we help? None, none of that. None of that. It's, and, and I think, and this is why I think, you know, with all due respect to the, um, let's call it the working from home hype um, and how everything is never going to be the same, a lot of it is basically the same. I think it's actually, I think COVID in many ways has amplified the disconnect that existed be before COVID in, in terms of uh, firms not calling their customers, firms not listening to their customers, not having these basic human uh, interactions. And I think this, this was, again, this, in my experience, I was working with a lot, of, a lot of international law firms. This was the case before COVID and this only became, this only grew worse during COVID. Um, again, it's and it's because firms don't know how how to deliver services that way, um, and it, it requires a, a, a you know a different mindset and a, a very a very different kind of delivery um, and a lot of empathy. I mean, empathy. You know, if we we talk about innovation and if there was one one thing that can truly revolutionize the legal industry is empathy. Em empathy and experimentation. Just these two things, uh, if people are really willing to, you know, take the leap and just, you know, uh, just really, really embrace these two things, it can, it can really change an industry. So Nir, thank you ever so much for your time today. I could talk to you for hours, but unfortunately that's all we've got time for, but thank you so much for your time today. Thanks so much for having me. Um, really, really enjoy this and happy to help. That was Nir Golan in conversation with Claire Rayson, and Claire's with me now. A real theme for me during that conversation was how enthusiastic Nir was about thinking of customers rather than clients. It's an interesting use of words, and I think he does that because it's, it's really for him about innovating with your clients. And more than that, it's about changing the mindset that some um, lawyers have um, and you know making it more about the whole experience rather than just the specific delivery of, of a legal product. What also came through quite strongly was how problems couldn't be solved by small groups by a lawyer or a client. He seemed to be keen to get everybody in the room to try and find the best solution. Yeah and that's one of the things that's one of the reasons why I love talking to Nir because you know having been in uh, private practice both as a lawyer but also as a, a marketing and business development director you know I've seen it from both sides and I think having diverse teams and thinking about problems in a different way is a really powerful message and it's not one that you you hear very often but having that diverse thinking and having people from different parts of the business um, is something that Nir is passionate about. I think it's something that I'm very passionate about too. Um, and it will be interesting to see which firms start to adopt that approach. So do you think private practice lawyers are nervous about getting into that type of innovative process with their clients? 
Yeah, I think so. I think, as it, you know, I think it's a couple of things. I'm not sure that it, it's nerves. I think perhaps it is trying to understand where other disciplines fit. So I think, you know, it's starting to happen. So you, you're starting to see, you know, you have done for a while now project managers that come on board and start to manage a matter and start to allocate work to different lawyers. And I think people can see the value in that. I think until lawyers start to see what they're delivering as more than just the law um, it's going to be hard I think to have a truly cross practice team um, but you know it was interesting the way that Nir touched on that and was thinking about things you know as a GC you know it was interesting that when he thinks about a legal problem and you'll know yourself Ollie when you were when you were in-house that you know yes people come to you because there's a legal aspects but there's always more than that legal aspect at play and actually that's where I think having that diverse team will really come into its own. And so much about the mindset and it being a cultural issue to try and solve a problem. Do that in collaboration with customers rather than do it, trying to do it as an isolated individual. Yeah I agree and having more people on board and I think you know again I think that um I think for, you know some firms are very good at it some firms are perhaps you know not so good um you know I wonder with everything that's been been going on recently with COVID-19 and having people you know virtually having to kind of sign up whether that's you know it could go both ways couldn't it it might encourage um bigger teams on calls because you kind of have to do that mental checklist have I got everyone in the room um or it could go the other way and perhaps you know you're you're more inclined to have smaller conversations because actually it's just easier to to set up a call with a few people Oliver so when you were you were in house you know was that a big mental shift for you well the biggest change was just having your client in the next door office and not the end of the phone or, or an email so that that requirement to work collaboratively and really understand the context in which your advice was was being given became even more important and so much of what Nir was saying resonated with me in that regard. And actually that probably goes to the how that Nir was talking about doesn't it so it's, it's understanding the difference between you know where you're providing the work um, you know moving across to you know how am I delivering this service. Absolutely and how will I get the best outcome for my business just just replace that with how will I get the best outcome for my clients and I think that will be a really helpful framing for any private practice lawyer. So Claire thanks very much for sharing that interview. No problem. I do hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Lawyer's Coach. We'll be back soon. Thank you for listening and goodbye. Lawyer's Coach is brought to you by Client Talk and Hansard Coaching. If you're enjoying this series, please rate us on your podcast provider so that others can find us. If you're a lawyer and would like to take part in Lawyer's Coach, please visit our website, lawyercoach.co.uk, for further details. And you can also join the conversation on our LinkedIn group, Lawyer's Coach. If there are any topics you'd like to hear us discuss, then just get in touch.